Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. Hey, you didn't expect to see me t this evening, did you? Today, on Wednesday, I know that we normally do this on Thursday, on Thursday evenings, Thursday afternoons, uh, advertising our Bible study. Praise God. Well, here I am today on Wednesday uh, afternoon speaking to you about what's going to take place tomorrow if the Lord delays his coming and he allows us to live. If it's the will of God tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, we are going to have our Thanksgiving Day service and the service begins at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and we are our goal is to be walking out of the sanctuary by 12 noon. So I'm all excited about the Thanksgiving Day service, and I'm explaining to you why I'm coming to you without having first said Happy Thanksgiving. Praise God. I hope I'm among the first to uh, bid you a happy Thanksgiving. I look forward to it and I love this time of the year. There's a passage of scripture that I want to share with you. The Bible says in Psalms 107, you're familiar with it, beginning at the very first verse. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That is, let the redeemed of the Lord say this. What say so, i.e. say this. What, uh, 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 what is it that the redeemed of the Lord uh, uh, should say? The redeemed of the Lord should say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord because the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Every one of you out there who are watching today, who are paying attention to this, whenever you will see it, if you are redeemed, if the Lord has bought you back, brought you out of sin and set you free, you got to give thanks. Everybody who's born again, regardless to your situation, you have so much, we have so much to thank the Lord for because we are, we make up the redeemed. So the redeemed of the Lord is to say to people, spread the word everywhere we go. Remind people, remind the lost, remind the up and in, the down and out, the up and out. Remind everyone you talk to, remind those family members that you will be dining with. Remind them to give thanks unto the Lord for the Lord is good. You know what I noticed? It has become the American way to complain. It's the American way to find 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 that something that's wrong. If it's good weather, it's too warm. If it's cold weather, it's too cold. Uh, I was watching the other day and we had a, a, a snap of good warm weather and uh, we were saying, oh, it's global warming. And then the weather turned cool. Well, what are we going to do now with the homeless? It seems as though... Uh, People are never satisfied. We always, we, we find, we look for something to complain about. How about this? How about all who are redeemed? Obey Psalms 107 and verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. What? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I want you to know that you're looking at a man who's been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And not only have I been redeemed from the hand of the enemy, that is, I've been saved from sin, but the context here is not merely the hand of my ultimate enemy, but all of the enemies and the different traps and things in life that Satan has set and, 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 and uh, use for our destruction and to, to cause us to be nothing and to cause our lives to be wasted. I want you to know I'm where I am and my friends, you're where you are because the Lord in his goodness, kindness, and tender mercy has over and over and over again redeemed us from the devil's plan, Satan's traps. Oh my, uh, we've walked right into traps that Satan set 
and God by his grace did not allow those things to uh, spring, if you will. He kept the trap from springing and we walked in and out, not even knowing that we were in a trap. You've been sick in your body and God healed you. I want you to know there have been healings that have taken place that you hadn't even asked for. He knows what we need. What a mighty God we serve. We have so much to give thanks for. And he gives an example here. Verse three, he says, and gather them out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Verse four says, and they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary place. That is, they wandered in the wilderness 40 years in a trackless, trackless place. There were no road signs. There were no highways. There were no maps. But God said, follow me. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where you didn't know what to do, where to turn, who to call, how to handle it? You're in a solitary place. There are no road signs. There are no stoplights. There's no, hey, listen, there's no GPS. And you're in a place in your, uh, in your life where you're wondering, oh God, what must I do? I want you to know that when you're there, the God of the Bible is with you. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary place. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. Then cried they unto the Lord in their troubles. Look at this. And he delivered them out of all uh, their distress. I'm telling you, I'm not revealing anything to you that you don't already know. And that is that the God of the Bible is a deliverer. And you've been delivered, my friends, and I've been delivered. And, and some of you who are watching today, you're waiting for him to deliver again. Well, I want you to wait with excitement. I want you to wait with expectations. I want you to wait with a stretched out neck. You're looking for God to deliver because he's going to do just that. Look at this. It says he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. All that men, look at this, all that men, verse 8 of Psalm 107, all that men would pray Praise the Lord for his goodness and for his, look at this, and for his wonderful works for the children of men. Oh God, oh God, today, we're not, in, we're not even going to wait until tomorrow. I pray that you would join me right now. And just praising the Lord. God, we praise you. We thank you for your, your wonderful works in our lives. You have been good to us. You have blessed us, oh Lord. And my friends, tomorrow, tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, I want you to be one of God's greatest thanks leaders, cheerleaders, telling people about the goodness of the Lord. Don't you sit at that dinner table with food everywhere and join into some negative talk and some negative conversation and all you're going to talk about is what's wrong with the world. I mean, listen, we, we can talk about what's wrong with the world. We can talk about sports. We can talk about uh, these things, but, but the, the main talk ought to be the goodness of the Lord, how he has protected us, how he has watched over us, how he's blessed us to be born in this great land. Oh my, I thank God that I'm an American. I thank God that I am an American. I thank God that I'm an African American. I thank God that I'm a born again, spirit filled, sanctified, hallelujah, child of God. And I, I'm filled with gratitude. I thank God for his blessings. I thank him for my wife. I thank him for my family. Man, I thank God for the upper room church of God in Christ. And I thank God for you, my friends. I thank God for the greatest congregation in my never to be humble opinion in the body of Christ. God has given me people who love me and pray for me. I thank God for North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. I think it's the finest one in the land. I praise God for my wonderful presiding bishop, presiding bishop J. Drew Sheard, whom I believe is uh, the he's the world's greatest leader. He's the leader, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. We praise God for him and for our wonderful uh, general board, my supervisor, Mother Beverly Dijon. I have 
so much to be thankful for. Did I mention my wife, Gary? I think I did say my wife and my family. Pam's been right there. Hey, she's been cooking and preparing and the man is going to enjoy a wonderful, wonderful meal cooked by the hands of my wife, drinking her wonderful lemonade, telling the God of the Bible, thank you, enjoying the bounty of the Lord, if the Lord let us live, amen, if the Lord delays his coming, after we have celebrated Jesus and I have preached a message, I'm preaching tomorrow. I'm excited about it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you what, what I want to, what I want to preach about tomorrow. I'm going to throw it out there and I want you to be ready. And I'm telling God tomorrow and I want you to tell him, Lord, any way you bless me, I'm going to give thanks. That's a take on any way you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. Any way you bless me, Lord, I will give thanks. I thank God for how good he is. I thank God for the privilege of being able to uh, pray prayers or supplications. I can ask God specifically for whatever it is that I want. But what I'm most grateful for, I'm grateful that there are times, and quite a few of them, when he chooses not to answer my supplication, not to answer my specific prayer, because he knows that we know not what to pray as we ought. God knows he, he but there have been times, and uh, perhaps with your life, and I'm wrapping this up, I'm wrapping this up, but there have been multiple times when I'm praying, the Lord has said he's asking me for the wrong thing. <laughs> he sincere, bless his heart. He loves me, but he's off base. So I'm not going to answer and give him what he's asking for, but I'm going to do him one better. I'm going to give him what he needs. I'm going to give him what I know is best. I'm going to touch him with the touch that he really needs. I mean, look at him. He's praying. He's calling on me. Praise God. But you know, he's, he's human. He's limited. At his best, he can only see through a glass darkly. Amen. I made him that way, but I'm the almighty God. I'm the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and the ending. I'm the first and the last. I know what is best. I know what he needs. And let me tell you something, my friends, as I wrap this up, I'm so glad, Brother Gary, I'm so glad that God does that. I'm glad that there are times when I'm calling on him, yeah, he pays me no attention and does. He gives me exactly what I need. You know, one of the songs that we sang, Brother Gary, in church is, he gave me just what I needed. Now everything I have belonged to God. He gave me just what I needed. Everything I have belonged to God. So I got I to stop right here. Listen, we're going to have church tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina. And my friends out there who can't get to the service, I want you to tune in. 10 a.m. Now there will be no service aired Thursday night at the regular scheduled time. That's at the 8 p.m., 7.30 p.m. service. It's at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. I want you to spread that for me and join me right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ for Bible study, Bible preaching, and Bible teaching teaching, and we are going to tell the God of the Bible, thank you. <laughs> I love you. Happy Thanksgiving. May God's choice blessings be yours. I'll see you in the morning at 10 a.m. for our big, big Thanksgiving Day service. Oh, by the way, the reason we moved it from 10 I just, you know, I'm, I admit I'm a pea-brained preacher. I'm not the smartest guy. But in my limited knowledge, 
I just can't for the life of me get my arms around and, you know, reason with celebrating Thanksgiving, which is always the third Thursday in November. I can't figure out how you celebrate Thanksgiving and we're giving thanks to God, to the God of the Bible. How do you celebrate it by canceling the church service? Makes no sense to me. So what we've done is we moved it up. We're going to have church, church, and more church. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.